Good morning, family. I'm Stephanie Wadey. I'm Habasia, helping your brothers and sisters in Africa. And I'm also the one and only Creole Griot Tis. Yes, y'all. I am. Y'all like my ear candy? It's a gift from Janice Houston, one of my dear subscribers and sister. Y'all, how y'all doing this morning? I hope y'all are doing fabulous. I know I am. I'm just so glad to be here in the motherland and my spaceship, y'all. My mothership <laughs> in this space. It's counting down, though. Was Friday will be my last day in this place. I'll miss my birds, and I'll miss the beautiful surroundings. Won't miss having to pray for lights all the time, though. <laughs> this place got big issues with that. But, you know, that's the way it goes, y'all. It's Africa, and people are the same everywhere, so you have to deal with different type landlords and stuff like that, even with Airbnbs. But I just consider it a, a different type experience and it was meant to teach me something. So hopefully I learned the lesson well. I'm going to turn this camera around so y'all can see what I'm seeing. I just wanna say, I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying the the focus on Gambian women entrepreneurs. I just thought after I did my first one that wow, I already know somebody who would be good for the second one and then I interviewed her. So guys, as I meet new and interesting women in the Gambia doing good things in the community, whether they be uh, uh, people that's uh, Gambian citizens or Gambian residents that's from another country, I will do that. Uh, I think it's a realistic thing to actually see women at work because you'll see the value of their stories, y'all. It's always a danger of a single story or listening to someone else speak for people. I'd rather have them speak for themselves. I tell my story, so I try my best to get people to tell their own. So I'm just so pleased that the opportunities just came to be. Actually, the first one came about because I was at her store shopping. And she was so excited because some YouTubers had come in simply to just do her interview. <laughs> but I had already been going there and I already had bought uh, something from her before. In fact, more than one time. I just hadn't said anything about YouTube. As y'all know, I'm not monetized, y'all. So I'm very selective on the subjects that I talk about and and what I do, and I try not to get on people's nerves when it's come to just doing something just for views or likes or whatever. So I saw that she said, you never know when you're going to go viral. And I was like, yeah, she's so excited. So I just wanted to get some of that enthusiasm. And I just said, well, do you want 
me to do your photo. I have a YouTube channel too. You want to take a photo with me? And she said, yeah. And then afterward, and she warmed up, I said, now, do you want me to record you and I'll put you on my channel? And she said, sure. And she got all dolled up, y'all. She already was looking good. And she put on her hat that she sells in her stores. And she was looking so happy. And then that's how that interview came to be. Just a spontaneous occurrence. I never thought of that. So sometimes the universe will give you opportunities and then it's up to you to implement uh, some action because um, you got opportunity right there in your lap. You either take it or you, or you don't. And how I do my communication is how I've been doing my communication forever. I've learned lots of different communication skills by just living, y'all, 68 plus years. I was a nurse for about, we'll just say, close to 40 years or more. Because <laughs> after a while, you just stop counting. But I was a very young woman when I started uh, nursing. And while I was doing that, I got to interact with all of my patients and their families and all of the people that I worked with. And they were from everywhere, y'all. Not just the United States. They was from everywhere. They was from the Caribbean islands. They was from Nigeria and Ghana and everywhere else in between. St. Lucia and Trinidad and I can't even recall all of the places of the people that I worked with were from. And y'all know if you've been following me, I married a Nigerian, an Igbo man. And I simply just met him at a club, y'all. A regular old U.S. disco club in the 70s. <laughs> just like everybody else was meeting their husbands back in the day. You know, everything I always had to do with the dance flow or dance in. You know, us black folks in America in the 70s, we love to dance. That's one thing was a universal thing for us. You know, it just was in our DNA, y'all. Our African roots, we just love those drums and all the other instruments. So it just brought us together and soothed our soul, our spirits. Anyway, y'all, I've always talked to people since I can remember, even if I was just on my grandmother's porch, you know, ghetto white, cussing folks out <laughs> as they pass by and they thinking I'm cute because I'm a baby that could curse. <laughs> ghetto folks, let me, they was ghetto. But it was plenty of love there, y'all. Nobody was doing anything to me. I was just hearing people speak they ghetto knees around me, whether my family or neighbors. I got money for hanging on the front porch under the supervision of my aunts. <laughs> my young my young aunts, they weren't younger than me, but they were young. And even down the corner, Po missed the Easter rabbit. It's the Easter rabbit. It wasn't that I called him Easter rabbit that endeared him to me. It was the fact that I called him Mr. at a time when people were still calling grown men boys. And I still see that too. 
in different places because it takes a long time to see someone as an adult. They even call them youths and they're like 30, 40 years old. <laughs> and I know even some of the people that I, I feel like they're my close friends, they're like called people, children that's 40, 50 years old. <laughs> Even if you give birth to people, they grow up, y'all. Everybody grows up. I know when I was in my 20s, nobody could have told me nothing. I knew I was grown. I did what I wanted. The only person I didn't want to know what I did was my mama. And I know what she didn't know didn't hurt her. So I made sure she didn't know. <laughs> and I still did what I wanted, though, y'all. Believe you me. I just respected my mother and did not do <coughs> nothing, <coughs> excuse me, that she could consider bad in front of her. Yes, I did. And I always respect my mom. And I did respect all my elders. So anyway, y'all, just generalize talking a little bit about me and how my communication skills come about and the fact that I don't see my brothers and sisters in the motherland any different than I see my brothers and sisters in the U.S. If I'm at an airport <laughs> like I was last year when I was going back in London, I was stuck there for 24 hours because of the flight cancellation from Brussels Airline, and they didn't tell me. I sat there and I talked to so many people from different countries that I even believe this lady was from somewhere in Zaire, but she was living in, uh, in London with her uh, family, and she was going back home to visit and she pulled out all of her pictures and showed me their farmland and showed me her grandchildren that sold some of the fruits that came from their labor. It was so nice. And when she went to catch the plane, she checked in and then she came back to tell me goodbye because we had bonded just that quickly in the airport. Everybody thinks that they know me <laughs> and they form fast conversations with me. Yes, they do. Whether they're from London or anywhere on earth, pretty much. <laughs> but the color is something that just helps to attract the people to you because they think that Maybe you may have something in common. And it's a, one of the common denominators that bring people to me. And then uh, after the color, people in general talk to me because of my accent. And then they want to know where you're from. Because they like my Texas Southern drawl, you know. <laughs> so they remember my voice. So I get along with lots of people. It's just my brothers and sisters I have more in common with them. So I get to talk longer with them. Not that I don't speak to other folks, I do. I do. I even have friendships across all the lines of all the people that's available to be people on earth that I know. I can count most of my close friends on a couple of hands. But I tell y'all what, conversation is not hard for me, y'all. I've even gotten over this camera, being a camera, and seeing it as a, just a tool to speak to my family and friends all over the world. I know y'all see me. Even you guys that's not subscribing. What y'all wait though? It's free. Hit that subscribe button. 
hit the like button, share these videos. <laughs> it doesn't help me a bit for people to just have thousands of views and they're not subscribing. So just subscribe, y'all. Do it for me. You know, and don't send me an instant messenger to say you like my story. Comment down below on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube where the algorithm will know you're interacting with me. <laughs> yes. And today is Giving Tuesday. And if you feel led to give on this Giving Tuesday, consider Habasio, which is a 501c3 organization. Yes, I have a campaign going on Instagram, and I believe I will start one on Facebook. I'll share it to Facebook, because if you go on Facebook and you want to pick a charity even, Habasia, H-Y-B-A-S-I-A is there. You can click that on simply and start a campaign, and the monies will be deposited directly to how about But anyway, y'all, let me turn this camera around. It's still before sunrise, y'all. A little windy today. Feels nice. Don't even need a fan. have to go to the front like yesterday because people are doing stuff. I get up early and people are up earlier doing things. So I might have to go to the front so I can let y'all hear the birds better. Y'all guys, I had to take it downstairs as usual. Lately anyway, cause all that old noisy sweeping. I know everybody got to do their job, but it's like earlier and earlier, that's too much y'all. So enjoy down here, it's beautiful down here anyways. With those palm trees, so big, kind of even got a big roots, root system.
And y'all can see everything is always a matter of perspective and the way you have your camera angle. <laughs> I like playing with this. It's great sharing with you guys. Oh, wow, y'all. Fabulous, right? <laughs> I love hearing the roosters crow, too. And look at that black door. Now, this is that same thing going on without y'all having to focus on me. I hope I'm not making y'all dizzy. I am going slow as I think I can anyway. Look at this Boca Vivas. They're one of my favorite flowers. And it still reminds me of the Black Panther. Well, I don't know if this is like animal form and the animals talk to each other about what time I do my recordings in the morning. That everybody want to be in a recording today. The dogs and everything. <laughs> the people sweeping. This is my experience in the motherland, y'all. Now y'all know. It's Africa, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, guys. Until the next episode. Continue to treat people like you want to be treated. You can speak to anybody, anywhere. Remember, we are all the same. People are the same everywhere. And until next time, y'all, peace, peace, power to the people. And I'm out, y'all. Bye.